Well, welcome. My name is Clarence Slow. I'm with Star Force. I want to introduce my lovely partner over there. She's with the poop here, there. You can okay. never forget the hair in the '70s, right? Believe it or not, my hair started out that way. So, so but I'm changing. I'm going to change there. Well, again, my name is Clarence Slow. I'm with Star Force. I'm going to be the facilitator of this conversation today. I see the sign up here. I'm looking at the screens and it says community work session. I'm going to make an executive decision and change that to community empowerment work session. How do you like that? We're going to be an empowerment work session today. But before I do anything else in terms of this, in the context of what we're going to be talking about today, I want to introduce the other speakers you'll be seeing today. So if we could just introduce Laura, please. Just introduce yourself. Laura Salinas Martinez. Director of the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department. Okay, and? Hi, buenas noches. Good evening. Veronica Soto. I'm the Director of Neighborhood and Housing Services at your city of San Antonio. All right. So, let me just ask very quickly one or two people, why did you come and spend this time with us today? Let me ask you. Let me begin with you. Why did you come and spend this time with us? Um, this has been a really bad time for a lot of people. Okay. And I would like to see it resolved. Okay. That they get some kind of assistance and help to make the decisions that they have to make. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, what I've done is change the title to say Community Empowerment Work Session, right? All of us know that San Antonio has experienced a great deal of improvement. A lot of improvement in the city. A lot of renovating. And that's always a good thing for the most part. But that impacts a lot of people, right? Impacts some people positively, but it also impacts some people negatively. And we're going to talk about some of those negative effects a little bit. But we're going to kind of narrow the scope of the conversation to talk specifically about one thing. And knowing that there's some negative impact to a lot of the residents that, that, that really feel the effect of some of the renovation that's happening in the city, the city has taken, I believe, the proactive step to try to do something about it. But that includes you as part of that decision making, that part of that planning process. You need to be here so that the city can decide exactly how they do what you see here on the screen. This program that they're designing for, the Short-Term Emergency Rental Assistance Program. That is why you're here. Now, again, I know a lot of the frustration that many people are feeling the cause of the renovation. There's a lot of history, a lot of things that can be said. But as you hear what the city is dealing with and what I know you're dealing with, you'll find that there's some boundaries to what can be done, but some things can be done. But you're part of that decision making. You're part of that process. We want you to be part of that process. Does that make sense? Sure. You think sure. you can do that? I heard some conversations. <laughs> okay. All right, so before I do anything else, what I'd like to do here very quickly is show you something. And I think this is going to act as a framework for the conversation. For those of you who can see this, what do these two words say? Can you see that? Economic development. Economic development. Economic development, everybody agree? Okay. You guys are very good. You're okay so far. What's the catch? What's the catch? There's yeah, there's a catch. There right? has to be a catch here. <laughs> this is what it actually says. Oh. Yep. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, what's the point of this? Why do you think I'm showing you this? <coughs> what's the point? Confusion, right? Why are you confused? It's so much different than the first. See. Everybody comes to the table when they discuss issues with their own perspective. You saw that sign, and it looked like it said economic development because you know the English language, you can spell, you can see the words. It looks like it says economic development. But based upon your own theories of what it said, based upon your own perspective, you came to the table thinking that this was the truth, and this is what needed to be done, and this is how we were going to proceed. Everybody comes to the table, especially when we talk about these kind of hot button issues where people are really being impacted, with their own perspective. What I need for you to really do is look at this whole issue 
this whole issue of the short-term rental assistance as not just an individual that might need the assistance, but how does this affect the community? We're trying to find answers for the entirety of the community. Is that okay? Any questions for me so far? No rocks thrown, so I think we're okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so let me explain very quickly what we're going to do. I'm going to make my introduction, which I've just done. We're going to have representatives of the city talk about the program, some of the boundaries of that program, what's going to be expected of you. We're going to have three different tables, as you see, actually come up with some conclusions, some, some ideas wrapped around some questions we're going to ask you about this program. And then each table is going to report out what your ideas are. Then we're going to close and talk about some of the next steps in the process. Any questions? We're okay? George? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, that's all right. Get ready. Get ready. I'm, right. I'm ready. All right. So is Laura here? Where's Laura? Laura's next. Go right ahead. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Sure. All right. So what I'm going to go over today are the parameters of the Community Development Block Grant. So this short-term emergency rental program was funded with the Community Development Block Grant, and this funding comes from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And so I wanted to share with you what the minimal requirements are, the minimal thresholds, and then you can provide input on the program design so long as it's within these parameters, okay? And so these are non-negotiables. And um, with these programs, they're wonderful. They provide a lot of wonderful funding for community development and affordable housing development. Um, but it does come with a lot of compliance requirements and it comes with a lot of documentation requirements. So here in this first slide, and all of you, um, if you don't have copies, we put the presentation up up in the sign-in sheet. If you don't have any copies, Eric is gonna make sure you have a copy because this will be helpful when you start your work session work. Um, so the first item on there is that the short term, it has to be one time short term emergency grant payments. And also it has to assist households at 80% or below of median income. And what this means is that there's a threshold that's adjusted by household size and um, I can show you a chart a little bit, just a little bit after this slide to give you an idea of what that means for a family of four, say for example. We need to make sure that when we income qualify families for this program, that they do not exceed those income thresholds. Um, also, the rental assistance payments cannot exceed three consecutive months, and the rental payments have to be made directly to the, to the landlord. Now, these are the income limits I wanted to share with you. They're kind of tiny, so if you look at your PowerPoint, it'll probably be a little bit better. But what this means is, for example, if you have a household of four, so if you have a, a, a single parent with three children, or you have two parents with two children, then their annual household income cannot exceed 50800 That's what that schedule means there. Now, the next slide talks about what we're required to document. Because these funds have to be used for emergency need, we have to be able to document that. So some of our, um, our entitlement uh, cities, other cities that receive these funds, these are the types of, this is the type of documentation that they use. Uh, they either have a copy of a late notice or an eviction notice from a landlord. They have a copy of the proposed rent increase to show that um, their new level of rent is less affordable, or they provide proof of a financial hardship, such as loss of employment or an unexpected medical expense. So that's it. That's the, the threshold that we have to meet. Now, in order to design the program, that's where we, we're bringing you in to provide your feedback for that. And that is it. Sorry, so that, so that, do you have, do you have questions? Yes, please. Where can we find all of the information for this? So this is, it's going to be a little um, a little challenging, but this, the Code of Federal Regulations is 24 CFR 570. But to 
read it a lot easier, I would look up Basically CDBG. It's a HUD resource guide. So Basically CDBG for Community Development Blog Grant. That would be the easiest place to kind of read it in so that it's easy to understand. The Code of Federal Regulations is a little confusing. And the regulations is what all of this is based on. Right? Yes, right. 24 CFR so Part 570. CDBG is pretty flexible in what you do with it. And then you go further into the... Uh, no, this is, these are this, the, what is required in the CDBG program in the Code of Federal Regulations. That's the minimum threshold. For this program type. Yes, uh, do you have... Uh, literature already printed that you can give out to the public? Uh, the the, this is what we printed for you. The Code of Reg Federal Regulations is hundreds of pages, so we don't have that printed. So it's the basically CDBG. You can do a lot of things with the Community Development Block Grant for community development and affordable housing, but for this program in particular, these are the requirements, the minimal requirements for this program in particular. Yes, sir? How do you define short term? Short term cannot exceed three consecutive months, and that's in the HUD regulations. Yes, ma'am. Um, I guess first of a clarification, my question might be irrelevant. Um, my understanding of the vote by city council is that they approved the funding, but they didn't define the use. Is that correct? They allowed the reprogramming. They voted to approve the program, but did they, was there a definition that these fundings would be, this, these funds definitely would be for emergency rental assistance? Yes. By HUD? By HUD? Yes. So the funding was approved for short-term emergency rental assistance. Now, we in the Department of Neighborhood and Housing, or Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, we oversee the entitlement and we oversee the monitoring and oversight of these programs. So therefore, let me finish. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. therefore, um, what we are going to do is DHS will be delivering the service, so they're in charge of program delivery. What would happen normally with any funding is that we would have the person providing the delivery outline the program to us and then we would look over to make sure that it meets the federal requirements and then we give a notice to move forward a grant award notice or we execute a contract to provide the services okay so um so really as the, the way i see the requirements um they are really for specifically for short-term emergency and it wouldn't really be relevant for people whose rents go up and will continue to go up because it's only three months. Correct. And it also wouldn't be relevant um, for persons who, uh, um, so it would get so for someone who is um, displaced because, because what you end up doing what this does, or if it's seen as addressing it, is someone gets displaced by increased rent, and they're working, they haven't, um, they don't have a financial, they didn't have a financial hardship in the beginning. They didn't lose a job. They just can't afford the rent anymore. So, so it, um, so in fact, those people get rent for only three months and if they have to find a location that's affordable it might be someplace and and be able to do that with the three month funding but they would also have to go someplace else that is of a lower rent which is not in their neighborhood which is not by their schools etc that might be the situation yes um, but that's the, the parameters of this program in particular okay, let's, let's my question is that we have this program here for the three months mm -hmm. of emergency. It's now is where to go and find the, the dwelling because the, uh, the housing gave us a list and I have called that there is a four to seven years. So where am I gonna go after the nine months of my contract is over? I have to give 60 days notice. Mm -hmm. So where am I gonna go to use 
this program? Right, I don't have the answer for that, but we do have the Department of Human Services, Edward Gonzalez met with you, and is committed to uh, working with you to try to find something that is more of a long-term solution. Most immediately, we're just trying to help people that are impacted by the increase in rent. And we are working on those concerns with the mayor's housing task force. But this pro this this work session was really to to for the design of this program um, and to provide input. Yes, if, if I did the, the last two questions. I, I replied at eight um, different places in San Antonio. And it's kind of already it's already been like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I So I, I didn't get to say what I wanted to say. Okay, sorry. Uh, if I may, what I wanted to say is that in the work session, so perhaps you want to come to the table, sorry. that's going to be part of what gets folded into. We'd like the program to address this and help us think of ways in which to address it. Um, so that's part of the program site. Laura gave you the parameters, but if you say, but the program really needs to address this other question, then that's the conversation about the program design. All of you have great questions, and they're very legitimate questions. But I, I want you to keep in mind that there are some parameters to this. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a federal uh, grant that you're using this money for. So there are some constraints that the city has. Uh, there are a number of things that could, probably should be done, but there are only certain things that can be done within those constraints. All of you have legitimate questions, legit, legitimate concerns. I totally understand that. But we're going to have to kind of narrow the scope to what's discussed here because you're exactly right, Veronica. A lot of these questions are going to be answered, and we hope to have your participation in how we design the program going forward, not just to help you, but those who might, who might be experiencing the same thing. And I'm 100% my dad is not like, like right there. There's more, and it's just kind of. I, I totally agree. I totally understand. Let me ask you, would you like to join and participate in the work group to find some answers to that? How we proceed with that? Okay. Well, I tell you what, why don't you come forward and maybe sit in and we'll discuss some of those things because what we're about to do right now, let me ask get one more question and then we're going to stop at this point. Last question. Okay, I know that Veronica has said that San Antonio is not experiencing a housing crisis um, at this time, but I think if you talk to all the people who came here who are experiencing housing insecurity and the detrimental effects that it has on our lives and well-being, and if you spoke to probably about 80% of San Antonians, you would recognize that there's absolutely a housing crisis going on right now. So this is a great, I guess, um, if, it's, if it's developed well, it could be a good short-term solution. And that's what we need to A great band-aid fix, and that's what we'll talk about, right? Making it into a really great topic that will exactly. actually benefit people getting displaced. Exactly. But what we really ultimately need to do is end this placement altogether. So because I know that the GG is a very flexible program and there's lots of things that can be done. Did you guys consider any sort of like um, other ways to put that half a million dollars into creating more permanently affordable? We already do that. We already do that. So we receive entitlement grants from the government home funds. We build multifamily affordable housing. We've had this conversation. Multifamily affordable housing, single family housing for home ownership. We're already doing that. The problem is there isn't enough money. So we, in the mayor's task force, the task force is making a lot of recommendations to put more funding into development, looking at other options. And so that definitely is something that we want everybody to participate in. I think what we usually see, though, is what, where that money goes towards affordable housing is creating these like luxury condos and whatnot. Ours right? cannot be used for that. We have to help families 80% or below. So whatever comes from uh, DHS, the Neighborhood Human Services, that goes directly to affordable housing, like entire complexes. And no, we fund we fund affordable housing through affordable housing with affordable housing developers. 
So we fund in our food projects, uh, we fund, uh, we have Jennifer Gonzalez here, uh, Alabama Community Group. We fund Prosper APS, it provides supportive services, we fund senior projects. But it's just not enough money. I'm talking about the ones that like, like 10 to 20 percent will go towards affordable housing at whatever. You have some great questions. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to table some of those questions for the end of the conversation so we can actually get into some of these working groups, okay? So let's get into some of these working groups. This is what we're going to do, guys. Based upon the parameters that you had, and they should have their PowerPoint worksheet and the parameters listed on that PowerPoint, correct? Before you start, is there anybody who arrived late that would be welcome to participate in these focus groups? Please enjoy this. This is an opportunity where we're all coming together for the betterment. So please, anybody else? And the doors are closed. Like, if any community tries to enter, they're all locked. I just have one more question. Just something for everybody to think about. There's a bunch of like senior, um, what is it, what I'm trying to think? Baby boomers are on the right. Okay. So a lot of nurses are opening um, senior homes. And I just think this is. I mean, more well, again, what we're trying to do in these working groups is actually talk about exactly what you're referring to. So what we hope to have in these working groups is that kind of discussion. So why not just come on here and join us, okay? It was so crazy. I didn't even know that I had All right, guys, so this is what we're going to do. Based upon the parameters that you just heard mentioned by Laura and Veronica, we're going to ask you two questions that we want you to discuss in your own working groups. So if indeed you need to move around or, or actually take some notes, we have a report out chart that the staff will be assisting you with. So who are going to be our staff members doing this? Is there anybody? Okay. Well, is it here? I saw sweat it. I was ready to wear sweat. Great, great questions. Thank you. Good question. So we're going to have one staff member for each group assigned to you to actually transcribe and actually write out some of your ideas, okay? So I'm going to ask you the very first question. We're going to spend approximately 15, 20 minutes on this one question. How would you design this rental assistance program? Now again, remember, we're talking about this in a narrow scope. Many of you asked some very broad scope questions that were very legitimate. However, we're going to narrow the scope here so that we can really fine tune tailor this program for the people who are being impacted. So here's the question again. How would you design this rental assistance program? This short term rental assistance program. How would you design it to meet the needs of those being affected? So let me give you about 15 minutes to talk about that amongst yourselves. We have one transcriber per table. Share your ideas with them. And we'll talk about the size. Sure. Who's transcribing? How would you do it? Are you on city guard or transcriber? She's going to transcribe this one. No, I tried at one meeting and it was like Chinese French. It was like Chinese. As long as it's legible, it's really important. And we don't want any misunderstandings to happen. So let's work on the first question. So the rental, what would this rental assistance program really for the lady situation? The situation, the specific situation that they're talking about is people who are being displaced? As far as the, is that what they are? It's being displaced, or you need assistance for three months ago, or any other sort of issue close time, a month or two, so you might need something to get over that to go back to your 
regular flu. So, is there like a way to make like a um, so one thing that people need for sure is like storage facilities for their things so that they're when the, while they're looking for uh, a stable place, they at least don't end up losing all their belongings. Oh, oh, no. Right here. 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 Right to an honest short notice or a crisis situation. Well, I have that story, but okay, I can help my dad. There's some seniors that have kids. So, so we need a policy like that, or like movers. Money for movers. Um, yeah. A lot of Yes, sir. That a lot of the things we're going to be calling is going to be called rentals, both of which have made the media. The first is the Mission Trail, uh, trailer park. Rentals, the other thing I think was what they knew that they were going to be doing. And the second is the apartment complex that uh, I believe this gentleman is going to be so far. Okay. We're going to be a residence already in the because rentals are given for those I'm saying you guys will have a situation. I'm giving you two. Very real. 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 So possibly maybe training classes like yeah. trying to make sure much in order was mixed up with your career. Right. Also, who are we? Like, if you're going to have some time for a birthday, it's only a year around. It also has to be an emergency. Hey, guys, let me hear you. Hi, I'm here. Good. What we want to do is get all these conversations in one place. We want to make sure that people are actively talking about the same thing. So if you're asking a question here, make sure that they can hear here and they're both talking about the same thing. Well, I do, because we want you to be happy to do it. We don't want him transcribing some notes and her transcribing different notes in the back of the car. Oh, I do have a question. So my father does have a lot of money. Okay. Because it is like nine months to get this on the whole thing that I contacted him to do. But I don't want him to be responsible for it. Like any place else. No, they had to make five months. That's the first. 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 That's
I can do it. Like make it mandatory to have that when you say that after the 31st, they just come in and say, okay, you need to leave today? No, that's not how it works. They cannot do that by law legally. They have to give them the notice saying, you're not going to be here this month. Please know that you have 30 or 60 days to leave. That notice has to be given. But by, like, when? Whenever they choose to say, we're no longer going to be in we're no longer going to go month to month anymore. Here's the 30-day notice, here's the 60 days. Yes, kind of like he's happy. He has to turn around and give that notice. Because I did ask him, like, just like he's, he's asked to give that notice when he's going to leave, they have to give that notice. For what? For just activities? Yeah. 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 yeah, so just connect to become a community or talk like that. And I know with Mission Post, for instance, that's a particular example. They did have to do that because a lot of them were moving their roles. Okay, so those really, yes, are applicable. And you were from 1,500 to 2,000 individuals having to establish a brand new service. And then for apartment people, it wouldn't be the same. Right, it wouldn't be the same number, but they would still need help to be able to get the utilities put up. Yes, and normally with the CPS, if you've never had an account, then they can charge anywhere from $75 to $100 for the deposit itself, um, and then start services, and then start billing you after that. If you have had service in the past, if you owe a balance, then yes, yeah, that's when they charge you all that up. Plus an additional deposit. If you have service in the now, we see it's exactly transferred over. And then uh, some will charge a transfer fee, and depending on your payment history, they won't charge that fee at all. So we need help with utilities. So with the utility deposit itself or, or transfer yeah. yeah. or transfer yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To make sure everybody has like ready water or electricity. It's important to have because it's part of the house. The apartment or the trailer. Can I ask you a question? It's a one time uh, program. So once you get to three months worth, you won't be. I know there was a little bit limited. I know there's quite a bit of limited. You know, when you said 30, so it's not that long. It depends on the. It should be in a minimum of 30 days, correct? It should be a minimum of 30 days. Yes. But it depends on the landlord if it's going to go 30 days. Because in the lease, I'm pretty sure they have a wording that says in 60 days, we need you to give us a notice saying that you are going to leave the unit. That is the same thing with that. They would need to give a notice as well. I'm not sure what's in the lease. It has to go based on the wording of the lease. What are the priorities? Yes, sir. Uh, Good question. Yes, sir. We're talking about nine days or three months. Yes, sir. What happens if one of these years is over the third day so that you tell the idea of 60 days worth of eligibility left? Would you, if you needed this program again, go back and say, look, I only used 30 days of my nine day eligibility. Could I reapply because I have 60 uh, days left that I didn't get in, that I didn't use. I think it was a wise matter that she did yeah. this. One of them was that it would be a one-time assistance for a maximum end rate. So it would have to be a one-time. So if you had to use the one lady at one time, that's all you need, it's a one-time. If you happen to use two months or three months, it's a max of three, but only have one situation so no basically. Let me get this straight. Yes, sir. So I'm not making any statements. It's 90 days of eligibility. Whether you use it on the 60 days or one time deal, yes, and you get 90 days worth of aid. Yes, sir. Right. Three months. Three months. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So, like, say you go somewhere and you're displaced, and then the same thing happens in another 
another page, but you still qualify for that second for like it's, it's a different situation. But the program only class for what time? It's the same person. For lifetime? Well, we don't know the permits of how long. It might be a year, it might be two years. We don't know the exact permits of that yet. That's why right, so I would suggest it would be per situation because with the way the development is happening, a lot of the families are afraid that when they go to different parts of the city, it doesn't matter where they're going to be because there's so much development happening and they're always going to be the most vulnerable because they're going to be in those spots that they're going to, that it might continue to happen to them. And then um, I also work with domestic uh, violence survivors and um, when people are in that middle ground, even like in that kind of situation, it helps to have uh, assistance for hotels because there's a point in time when they leave when sometimes the the place that they're going to be is in the same timeline as the place that they're leaving, you know, and they don't, and if we don't want homelessness, like people on the streets with little, you know, women and children, then there needs to be some kind of emergency assistance with the hotel. But if we're looking at this funny thing, I'm going to outline the house. So specifically saying rent or house. So what would you have to in the to avoid homelessness, there are several programs such as SAM Ministries, Transitional Housing, Supportive Housing, Feminine uh, Supportive Housing, as well as uh, you have different shelters in San Antonio, uh, programs such as Family Endeavors, but also you have the uh, Longevity Supportive Housing as well. Yes. And then, of course, uh, for individuals that are experiencing domestic violence, and you have your shelter, you have your back, your emergency shelter. So, the thing is that even the domestic violence they don't have one way or like the whole stability of the house, they don't want to move them to another state because it's like they're already going through so many problems, that's the one thing that everybody's hanging on to. So, um, if we could just put a partial on of the other things, you know, that we need, that maybe not, may not be addressed by this program, but that we could look at whether there's that resource list or maybe those partners that we can start to, we could start looking at how we can break Yes, and as you know, if an individual is homeless, if an individual does become homeless and they do have to enter a shelter, then they can also, the children stay in the schools that they're at, doesn't matter what part of the city they go to, all they have to do is apply for the McKinney Venture. And that will allow them to be able to attend the state of the Well, with the McKinney Venture app, they will supply either transportation by bus or offer the bus voucher. I've talked to different and then they've applied to programs with the time is like way too long. They're way too long for these programs and that's when they finish the class because it's like they, things don't happen at the time that they should so that's where we are. Right? So, which is why we need that. Like some people are really in because there's tons of violence, right? But we need so many people to be able to do that. So that's why we and maybe this seems like a micro issue, but I bring it up. We do have some places where she knows it's for the and I'm going to write on the other eyes, and they say that they will often be a one-month lease. Senior, it's won by North Star Mall that does that. I'm familiar with it. It's right in North Star Mall. But it's one of the first things that the something that they call 30 day leases. They're not numerous in number, but if this program applies in your type of situation, or we the fact that it is a 30 day lease, well, on a 30 day lease, will they allow you to continue once a month after that? Yes. yes. And, and the basis of the rule is that you have to continue once a month, yes. For an individual to locate uh, something affordable, something safe, somewhere they want to be. Of course. And if that's ideal, that's you know, something someone would choose, then of course, as long as they have a piece of Okay, I just wanted to make sure that. So, any type of rental unit, whether it's a private landlord, management company, 
as long as we provide you the peace and that stability. I guess I guess what I think I'm asking to all of you is what type of units are we discussing that would, would, would be eligible? That's why I was asking. Let's hear a Okay, we're going to spend about another three or four minutes on this one question and then move to the next question. Again, what other so, program so the parameters of policy would you like to see? Are yes, we have like two minutes left. Like make sure they have to back the time back until they have some kind of language that encourages them to waive the penalties. I think that's going to be on the back end because you're moving out. Oh, I guess you might be having to move out to do something like that. Such as. Yeah, especially if they're going to be like a fee waiver. Yeah, that's a good way They can be proactive and they can be proactive and they Right now we're in the planning process, correct? Therefore, we, we plan with the policy being implemented. So what I think about Richard, maybe the answer is, how far out are we before we put us in place? I'm not going to be able to answer questions related to the program right now. But I would, I would like to just refocus everybody on the task, which is that we're asking for input on the design of the program. So rather than peppering folks out with these questions, I'd rather see more focus on you know, what, what would you like to see in the program look like? For a month to month lease, you get to notice. I didn't notice a 90 day notice because that, I mean, that full effort. Utility assistance. I was thinking about two more notes on this one question, then we need to move to the next question. The 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 and the reality of that is, I watched what happened with the trail, and there was absolutely, you know, that's more of a legal issue, also. You might want to check with that because they should give you a different answer. Should be a big one. I would, even though what they say, we have to look at the report to see what that says. So are we okay with it? Because is it writing? Yes, I was in writing. That would be the best section. But there, that's the thing with my father. There is no writing test contract. It's a month to month. Have you tried different agencies to help with your situation? They tried eight call. They tried eight call. I did that one. I did a disability one. There's a one for disability. I went to 
I think that we can have a document that oh yeah we have um, you're, you're like 14 know on, they don't on the best yes, but again we're trying to work on this program design we can't pretty much be retroactive with that situation we're trying to be proactive with this program could there be something like that could there be something where like when people move out you can help with the deposit and um, you know like the money that you have to people that are renting to accept uh, month to month right off the bat for people that are going for the seniors who will be transitioning into possibly a wait list, you know what I mean? So that because seniors, it's a very dangerous situation for seniors to be out. So that's a little beyond this program, but some of the things you mentioned are things to consider for the program. So we have like a parking lot right there? Yeah. Where we can put it? Yes, yes. Yeah, and then so that way we remember. That's part of it. Yes. So I know we want to get program design ideas out of this, but I don't want to discourage you from talking about the other issues that are also there. So this program, the, the funding source has framed, it's not ideal for every situation. Okay, everyone, let's wrap up this one question. Some of those could be program final response. Just make sure you capture them. Okay, so Thank you. nobody's really writing there. Who was writing? Who's going to write? Uh, I will now. Okay. So I heard 90. Okay, good. Thank you. I heard 90 day notice. Yeah, 90 day notice, and then in the parking lot we wanted to put um, the help with for the seat for people that are waiting for wait lists that especially seniors to have uh, a help with the de for any deposit that they need, and then also encourage renters to take them on as month to month until they can transition into their housing situation. I have a very good question. Right, this is like my dream right here. All right, guys, uh, let's stand around and focus here for a moment. What is the dollar you need? Give me your focus for just a moment. We're working on that also. So it's how do I? Yeah. Let me get your focus for just a moment. Anytime we're talking about financial assistance, that sometimes comes up. What is the dollar limit? Okay, everyone. Our very first question, and it caused quite a lot, a lot of the conversation, I think, was how would you design this rental assistance program? And again, I know that a lot of the conversation was more broad than that, but I think that was okay. We need to talk about those things too. There, there's some legitimate concerns that you have. So I think we have in some cases a parking lot uh, on each of these slides, or in each of these uh, categories that, that people have basically said we need to talk about this at some later date, right? So what I want to do is really begin with this table and have a community representative or resident from each table really talk about what they've concluded should be some things to consider in the design of the short-term rental assistance. And again, remember we're talking about things that can be added or complemented to this existing program. There are a number of other concerns, I know that, but we're talking about this one existing program. Do we have one, anyone here that can do that, or do I need to do that here? Okay, um, good, okay. <laughs> Everybody, let me have your attention here, okay? Because there, there may be something here that your table missed or can add as well. All right? I'm sorry, go right ahead. There was a little apartment complex that exists, but that is uh, a lot of the apartments are uh, already overbooked or don't have accommodation. So maybe a better list to okay. give it to residents. So did everyone hear that? One of the concerns here at this table is that, yes, you folks receive a list of apartments. I think you were talking about that. But it's not very effective because it's massively produced. It's not effective in that it really narrows the scope of those available partner, uh, partners or apartments that would be, um, I guess, able to assist you in a, in a rapid rate more than anything else. Is that correct? So I think that was a conversation I heard at several other tables. What's the second one here that you have? Uh, well, the uh, increase of rent okay. to a more than 5% I believe so. Yeah, I think, I think the comment there was if anything goes at 5% that the president should be able to get assistance. You mean in the, in the subsequent or the next yeah. apartment? Yeah. Okay. Like if, it, if they experience uh, an increase, I think it just above, uh, you know, like their rent being 5%. It doesn't have to be the size of the value rate, even a 5% increase to justify it. I think I've heard that in a couple of tables yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. All right. And what about this third and last one? Helping with addressing the impact of rate from the existing needs. Okay. 
So again, I think this was something I heard at every table, even in the background here. So again, help with really the negative effects that a breaking a lease, the existing lease can cause. Some of you were talking about that needing help with that, right? Okay. Anything else that we didn't have? We'll get right to that table, sir. We'll get right to that table. Just one moment. Okay, second table here. Is there someone that's going to report out here regarding these comments? Okay, who's going to be? It sounds like you're going to vote. You're going to vote in. Okay, go ahead, George. The biggest word on that board is communication. Presently, there is none. And I'm talking about tenant management and the city of San Antonio. There's not enough communication. If we improve on that, we can get more proactive, we can get more involved. You know, it's, sometimes because of bureaucracy, you have to wait, you have to wait, you have to wait. Why do we have to wait so long with the housing situation in Saha? Why hasn't the city addressed it and what are they going to do about it? Because it's going to continuously get worse. May I ask you a question on yes, that? Sir. Because that's a very good point. And that's always something that you hear in community, community engagement sessions, right? Not enough communication. May I ask you, many of the rep uh, representatives and res residents here, uh, what form do you think that communication should take? I mean, people are, some people are on their iPhones, some people receive emails. So how do you think we should communicate, or the city should communicate with you? What's the best form? Letter and telephone. Letter and telephone? I think, I think management and the city has to go above and beyond. Okay. They have to. You know, we're looking to the city for guidance. How do we resolve this issue? You know, uh, and we need. I think if we proactively approach management, without like we're going in there with pitchforks, uh, they're willing to sit down. You know, a cohesive group of representative tenants uh, meeting with Capstone. It shows the other tenants that Capstone is willing to sit down on top of this, and, and they know what the issue is. Okay. We got to realize they're in the business of managing these apartments. You know, maybe there's something they can do to make it look better, something like that. So better communication, what else do you have here? Uh, resident sensi uh, sensitivity. And if I correct me if I'm wrong, it has to do with tenants that I know have moved into Soapworks 1 since they were open in the mid-70s. You know, you, you've got maybe two or three two-bedroom apartments. You've got one three-bedroom. They've been living in there since 1975 when they first moved in. When it comes to this process, it's part of the eligibility criteria, and correct me if I'm wrong, your length of time at the complex needs to be taken into consideration. Okay. So, so that, that would express yeah. sensitivity. Well, I think that another element is to make sure resident sensitivity is that uh, the management and the city have to understand what you're saying is that the wide variety of communication channels exactly. and messages and language um, uh, channels that meet the residents where they are instead of requiring the residents to take transportation to go somewhere or are available only on certain days at certain Very time. well said, and which is why I asked the question. The city and management and anybody and everybody within this loop of conversation may believe that they indeed are communicating, but if a flyer doesn't do it for you, we need to know what does that for you. Uh, an email, a phone call, what does the that The city may be communicating, but what they're doing is not communicating communicating enough. Okay, so it's more. Volume. They, need, okay. they need to expand. Volume and variety. Okay, what else, George? Uh, I see user friendly language, so obviously make sure that things are translatable. The city dictates to the communities, these are our policies, and you know, you're going to give them out to us, put it in English so we can understand without all the what I'll do is parents and councilmen, political bureaucracy. Okay. Goes along with it. No legal leaks. Planning, planning. <laughs> okay, all right. I think the word we used was like cultural sensitivity. Okay. That sounds even better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Anything else here? I see the term metrics. What, what do you mean here? Or we need documentation. Uh, we need to define what success of outreach is. 
and one possibility is that um, either the management or the city um, gets written acknowledgement, you know, acknowledgement sure. from 100% of the residents that they, they understand the program and they understand their options and they, you know, just acknowledgement from 100%. Very good. Very good. Yes, sir. One last are, thing. Are we taking into consideration any additional incentives that Capstone, for instance, can use? When I first moved in, you get $25 off a month of your rent if you're over a certain age. I'm not aware of that. Can anyone in the city respond to that? Or? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, okay. that's probably just the management's way of dealing with the issue. Yeah. But that in itself can be an incentive. So additional incentives, something that we can talk about at a later date. Okay. Are you going to like ground plug above and to, you know, leave it up? Okay. All right. Good. I'd like to add something to the additional incentives. Sure. If you drive around San Antonio, you'll see signs. And unless your ice <laughs> is very poor, it will say something like move in today and get one month's worth of rent free okay. or get one half month's worth of rent okay. free if you move in today. So some of the properties are for marketing purposes offering some sort of So maybe we can add that to the, the bedding of the list that we talked about of availability in, in apartments and housing, right? Right. Okay. So let's talk about this table. What did you find? And who's going to be speaking for us here? Uh, uh, I think we're pointing to her. We have said um, storage was um, necessary because that way people don't lose their belongings so, in the, in so the process. So finances for storage? Yes. Okay. Um, and then okay. Um, to take into account that um, movers, that movers will have okay. to be hired, especially when it's elderly and people like that, that, you know, or single moms. So assistance with these things, I see storage, money for movers. Counseling services. So counseling services okay. would be um, there's a lot of stress that is comes along with the with the move, okay. and um, to be able to also get kind of like an orientation about the the services that do exist that might not be addressed by this one program. I see. But if there's other places that can be addressed, or if they can come up with another package, you could say like even if it's just partners getting together to talk about special packages to develop for this kind of situation, like support. Sure. And then um, either money, like in the form of cash or something, or, or waivers. Or even not cash, so, as you said, the counseling service, any additional support that can be provided. Medical also, because okay. the stress of, of displacement causes people's medical conditions to get um, worse. Okay. And so a lot of times we'll see increases in people going to the doctor or to see you know, counselors for either depression or things like that, um, or medications. And then for the utilities and transfers, either, like we're saying, either cash or waivers uh, an agreement with SAWS and those other places to waive those fees okay. so people are not having to bear the burden of those types of um, those types of things and then um, we, there was a question about per situation because it was like this is a one time deal and you got to take it but I mean if somebody is displaced one time and then they go somewhere else and they're displaced the second time and by no fault of their own then technically they should be able to qualify for more assistance because that was not their and the way the city is developing either you, you, on the west side north side I mean on the west side south side or wherever it's like you're gonna you, people are afraid that this is gonna happen again and that's just gonna add to their anxiety okay what about the 90 day um, notice? and then the 90 day notice um, because people are not being given we have people saying that they're not being given the notice or it's very ambiguous especially people that are month to month okay. that there have to be a 90 day notice not just a 30 day notice because when you're in a very vulnerable situation like seniors especially or people or single moms you know where you don't you might not have that support system that's like the difference between being on the street so with some assurance that this is yes okay. and then uh, for then we were told that these issues could be we made a parking lot for issues that um, were not necessarily part of this program but we said like hotel assistance because say you don't you're in a waiting list and you don't have uh, accept you don't get you're accepted into another uh, rental situation 
your you know to avoid homelessness have like an emergency fund for those emergency hotel assistants for the family so that they're not on the street okay and then as well as help with deposit and access uh, encourage renters to do month to month so that people can um so that people like because i guess it was a, a lot of talk about the seniors that are not qualifying for uh, they're on this long waiting list um so um, they're on a month to month. If they, you know, you don't know when you're gonna be accepted. So if you make a lease with somebody else and then you get accepted, then you're gonna have to be penalized for breaking that lease just to get into this place. So we need that month to month access for people okay. in these situations. Right. Sir, I'm sorry. Per what diem maybe per expense diem. and per diem expenses for people that have to get uh, leave work in order to be able to, to, to do all of these things because there's no way that you can be working and trying to meet those deadlines. Okay. You know? right. I mean, then you're not going to afford anything. Last question in this particular, uh, last response to this question, then we have to move to the next question. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to know, is it possible, maybe possible, if there's any way they could maybe have help us financially pay for these extra fees that we just can't make. Yes. We could be our rent, but these fees, the fees associated with that's the move us. or? That's what's killing us. Okay. okay. I think that was talked and about and in each people, of these people, people as, at the soap works, we would appreciate the management, okay. and the owners, to show us a little dignity and a little respect. I understand, I totally understand. Okay, folks, let us move now to the second question. We have limited time with this question, but it's a very important question. So listen up, here's what we're gonna be talking about. So the first question was, how would you design this rental assistance program? The second and last question is this, how should we document emergency need? How should we document emergency need? And again, let's be very focused on this program. Could you give us an example? Yeah. All right. Someone who's more familiar with the actual program parameters? Anyone wants to speak to that? Um, this table talked about my rent is this, my new lease is now 5% more than what I'm paying now. So that's documenting the need because I can't afford the 5% or 10% more lease now. So that's document that shows this is what I pay now, this is how much it's going to go up by, and the difference is 5, 10 percent more. So that's a document. Okay, thank you. Any other questions regarding that? Okay, going to begin. We're going to do this for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we're going to go. How do we document? How do we document? Yes, Good. 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 Okay. <laughs> I, I have one thing I'd like to do. Yes, I know that may sound like some people would cheat, but what happens is there is someone who knows what the emergency is. We can always write it down. But, but what they have for policy program. But what I'm saying is, could, could there be such a thing as verbal documents, but verbal documentation? Like, let's say this person has a friend number and has an emergency, but it's not in writing that she's known this lady for years, and she knows she has an emergency. I think we answered that question earlier with the legal forms of the power of attorney. You had to go down it as an actual cabinet. But I'll write it down here. Verbal documentation. And then that talk to people like the third party, um, like if you, you know, like if you're just a parent or dad or you're a father or something and they're not able to advocate for themselves, would you and somebody who's advocating for this person be able to uh, help with that documentation? You have to go through the legal steps, you have to call an attorney. There's a police yeah. organization would help you do those things. But I think in order to qualify as a federal program, you have to have those people done. Yeah, just to remind because that might even be part of like an orientation for people to understand like how to have the program. So my question is like, how would you design this program? What does it mean like? No, that's why we're here. We're trying to get the, the input from y'all to see what parameters we can set, what needs to be met. 
to help y'all get this. Yes. What do you what do you think what do you guys find as an emergency? You lost your job, you're being evicted, things that are those lines. What, is, what do you think is an emergency that you like to see? Folks, let me interrupt your conversation for one second. Ms. Veronica, Ms. Laura actually asked me to say this. I think it's very important. Uh, I I have been um, really focusing you on the focusing you on the program, and that's necessary. But I do not want to take away from the fact that you have other concerns. So please feel free to voice those concerns with some narrowness, simply so that we can be effective with the time. But we will actually document those things in a parking lot form so that we will actually address them later, OK? okay. You want medical emergency? Yeah. Medical emergency, people who lost their jobs. I have one. Maybe a small one. How about you know? How about information concerning the funeral? That could be an emergency. But I was going to. You know, I'm just going to listen. Can we dig into the like yes. How are you so? What, what's the maybe we can say family? How about how about a death? How about a death? Not maybe that would be clarified. They don't know. They don't know. They have no. They have no place to go. Just to make sure. So basically, we need someone that if the rent is going to be like five percent ten percent more than this program, we can apply for this. So. No, it has to be an emergency. So this is an emergency? Yes, this is short term, three months for an emergency. And right now we're trying to get the same as what y'all consider emergency, what the plan is, so that's why we're trying to get the input from y'all what you consider emergency. This basement, basement point. Like it's one of the way I'm hearing it from the kids. People on a fixed income, a five percent increase in the increase is an emergency. Because it's, it becomes outside of their means, especially if it's not given enough notice. Rent increase. Yeah, and if there's like um, a fee increase. Yeah, now we're like through the like how he was saying through those little fees, you know that then it's like they can't afford it anymore, but they have nowhere else to go. So see, like those fees, they have a lot of it. They're charging all the individual fees, like electricity, and that's what makes it so hard. I have two small ones. Yes, sir. What happens? What happens if a person is suddenly involved in all of a sudden their whole life is turned around because they're in an accident, like an automobile accident? So uh, would that fall under the medical emergency? Yes, a medical emergency. Okay. And the other one is what happens if it may sound super small, but I'll put it up. That someone in the family who would generally be detained ends up in jail. And they're, and in other words, the rent can't be stopping because the person who normally could pay the rent is now in Burke County Jail, becomes incarcerated. And, and the, 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 the remaining family members have no money to pay the, pay the you know, in other words, they're out of luck because they're going to pay the rent in jail. I change that to inability to, to access funds or rent. Yes, inability to access funds or rent. Thank you, sir. Related to me. Thank you, sir. I'll just say rent. I just changed a little bit. Yeah. Inability to access funds. This is more like specific yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. more general. Yeah, actually, they're both. They're really good. Yeah. They're both really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inability to access funds for rent. That would be a good general one. Actually, they both are needed to be listed out there. They both have a place. Yeah. 
SSI saying we have denied your claim when they were counting on that SSI money to pay their rent. Then I would benefit. Then I would benefit. Thank you. 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 Someone gets a letter saying because of X, so we can cut your and benefits, and the cut in your benefit means you can't pay the rent. So it would be loss or denial? Right, loss yeah, or denial, right. I don't know put that deal and say, well, we're only going to give you so much and you can't pay the rent anymore. Yeah. What else would be a reason that maybe yourself or somebody that you know? How about one other one? Got one more. Yes, sir. I'm full of, uh, of things. We, if we had more time, I'd give you more, but we only got 10 minutes, so I'll give you one more. Uh, how about a letter from the organization documenting the person's situation? For example, St. Vincent de Paul. Let's say this person has gone to St. Vincent de Paul. Systems, and whoever they have talked to at St. Vincent de Paul is that this family is in need of assistance. Hmm. In other words, a, a letter or some sort of note from the organization. I mentioned St. Vincent de Paul. Like a reference, right. I, I mentioned St. Vincent de Paul because they get a lot of people who seek assistance and then they realize that the person may have more than they can offer. They're giving it to you. We have to be realistic. We have to be Everything that I think it's come to do the emergency rent mentors. But no, we talked about the documentation. <laughs> if you have any other form of documentation, you think it should be given. Yes, ma'am. I understand I think there was no problem. I mean, I think that would be necessary because <laughs> otherwise it's like, that's my yeah. <laughs> I think it kind of went into the communication issue. Like, if there's that case management happening, then from the beginning till they're, they're in. Yes, I'm a bit of a 
but, but instead of referring them up to just some random people, we'd like making sure people are okay. All right, let's wrap up. Like, do you have food? I have one real quick one here. How about it looks like we had a lot of quick progress with this particular question. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing you did before to report out at this table. So let's begin with this table. Do we have the same person doing it? Let's give our attention to this individual at this table, okay? All right. What's the first thing that we saw? Oh well, the general patient pretty much did what was written on paper, but they wanted to do two more things. Okay. Which was uh, showing existing leads versus new leads. Existing leads versus new leads. <laughs> so they can show the increase of their rent. And okay. Their and also have a graph for the cost for new developers sure. to come in. They're you know. Uh, they'll be taking action on one, on one or the next. Maybe have a graphic clause for the current residents to stay in that building. Taylor's staying rent until they either decide okay. on their own okay. or they receive. So this was in addition to what you've already received in terms of some yeah. requirements. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. What about this table? Who's going to report out to us? Is it you again, George, or who? No, it's Lynn. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Here we go. What we came up with was the rent increases, unexpected uh, life situations, death, unemployment, yeah. health, eviction, yeah. divorce and separation, and becoming a single. Yeah. I think you got everything covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we missed anyone, anything on this one. George. Just an added note, I think I found myself in a unique situation where the city is turning around and asking us for guidelines, you know, and not, we don't have anything in writing that we can offer you, but get involved, give us your input. It can be put into something that the council members can vote on later on. Okay. So we could be making headline history here. I would love to think so. We do it not just for this community, but for every community. Well, that's the whole point. Hence the word empowerment, right? Okay. Hence the word movement. There you go. Excellent. All right, are we finished with this table? Yeah. Okay. All right, this table, who's going to talk to us? So we said um, basically um, emergency needs, so medical emergencies, job loss, because they would have no income, people that are just in, in situations where they're displaced from their, from their homes, um, where they have no home, at, or they're in a situation where there's no real health, it's not very healthy, or there's no safety, or there's safety issues. The rent increase uh, for people on a fixed income or low, or, you know, that are very fixed income, a 5% or more increase can be a crisis. It, and that can be in the form of all those little fees that pe that are tagged on little by little, little by little, until you can't even afford to live there anymore. So that, that was said by the yes. first table here, right? So okay. to consider that part of the, of the situation and crisis of people when they're on a fixed income, especially seniors, Incarcer when, if a family member or whoever is the rent payer, if they're in a situation where they're in incarcerated or they're in detention and they're in people, family members or whoever is not able to access funds, um, so inability to access funds for rent, like if there's an interruption or an emergency that causes that. And then, um, yes, if you can turn that. Um, we also said like for people that are un undocumented but are also in these situations, um, to find ways for them to qualify also because a lot of times people don't qualify for those programs and yet they're they're even more vulnerable for all these other things um, loss of uh, so then also if people are denied their benefits or they lose them in some way that that makes them vulnerable a natural disaster or um, also with, I guess somebody mentioned a reference letter from an organization or school where where somebody else says this is an emergency I feel like this person is is gonna end up you know they need assistance to, so that they're not homeless then that would be it and then we put in the parking lot we put case management I think it goes back to the communication issue that we're talking about that shouldn't just be one time like if you're in this process there has to be somebody checking in to make sure even if you're not 
totally out of out of the clear out in the clear do people have access to food you know if they don't do they, maybe there's a senior who doesn't have transportation and they can't go and they really need to go to a food bank or something maybe you know like or did somebody fall through the cracks? So is there gonna be somebody that's there that's checking in so that they can catch people before they become homeless, you know? So like case management? Yes, there needs to be case management. And then also we put uh, continuous counseling services so that if whatever this program, instead of just being told, oh, our program doesn't do that, that then we're able to place people where they need to go. Excellent, excellent job. Give yourself a clap. Everybody, just give yourself a clap. Job. You guys did a fantastic job. Again, this was about empowering you, not just filling the, uh, the checkbox, to really hear what it is you have to, to say about this program and make sure that we include some of these things to the best of our ability. Any other any other comments? Any other responses? Do you have something to say, George? Yes. I knew you. Has any thought been given to adding on, we've come up with a whole bunch of great, good ideas. I think so. I would like to suggest a proposal that we have a follow-up session. So do we need to more define these things before you take them to the city, or, or are you just because of the time constraints and money involved? As a matter of fact, Veronica is going to close this session by responding to exactly that point, okay? But I thank you again. Thank you for indulging me. You guys have a great evening. Yes, sir. I just hope everything we do here today will not be for nothing. That our words will be heard, our voices will be heard, and we will be respect, respected as people and community. I agree with you 100%. Oh, just one more thing. Um, are we going to get emailed all of these notes so we can review them and, um, you know, kind of make sure that it was documented in the way that we wanted them to be. I'm going to let Veronica respond to that because she will be, she'll be, she will be talking about the next steps involved. Yes. That's what I'm here for. Um, and I go by Vero. So, um, make sure you did sign in. And I think we have the sheets with emails and phone numbers because that's a way for us to communicate back out. Um, so first of all, I really want to thank you for spending this evening with us because we know your time is valuable and that you'd probably rather be somewhere else with your families than spending time with bureaucrats here. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Councilman Trevino is here, so I do want to thank him for joining us and being part of the conversation. Thank you. I know you've been at um, this particular complex as well and have uh, elevated our conversation and have resource fairs, uh, at least the tenant resource fairs and meetings. Thank you for being at another meeting with this resident. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just, I just really, briefly want to thank everybody. Um, you know, I, I really, what I saw today was, was a lot of really great ideas. And that really brings value to, to what we're doing. And I want to reassure everybody that we're listening, we're shaping something that is, that is considering every single person going through some of these issues. Uh, we're listening loud and clear, and we'll, we'll continue to work hard. I want you to know, uh, while we're talking a lot about some very specific things, we're going to we're going to keep looking for other, we're going to turn over every stone that we can to find more funding, to find uh, other strategies to help our housing and neighborhood services be more robust. Uh, this is a conversation we're going to be taking up in, in this new uh, uh, budget uh, setting session that we got, we're coming up on. So uh, we're going we're gonna to take all these lessons and learn from it. And I, you guys are helping to set that, that example. I just want to thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. I want to thank our facilitators, parents, and did a great job. We wanted to bring so much from the outside because we know some things it's difficult uh, to be dealing with the bureaucrats uh, because there are trust issues. So we wanted to bring someone who would set a, a neutral space for us to have this conversation. They did a great job, so I want to thank them. And
our staff with Neighborhood Custom Service and the staff of the Department of Human Service who will be the ones delivering on the program. We have Barbara, Patty, Erica, we have Richard, we have Sylvia, and I think we had uh, Abigail and Annabelle. 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 So <laughs> Annabelle uh, we <laughs> we had the other folks, I know I see even our city attorney came back to be shared a cookie earlier uh, to, to just listen to the conversations. They're the ones that really make our department um, shine and make the city shine. So I want to thank them for being here and being part of this as well. Let me talk a little bit about our next meeting. I want to assure you, like the council said, that we are listening. Um, not everything you ask for can be delivered. So I want to manage some expectations. Why are you going to be That's right. Like, which is weird. Edward Avery is welcome. Sorry, because you turned around. No, there he is. Sorry. Sorry, Edward. Sorry, train of thought. So I want to assure you, we are listening. But that not everything that you're asking for is something that you can address right away. But we're listening. That's why. We said there's issues beyond this program that we want you to list up. Um, Marie and Jennifer have really pushed us hard, so I want to thank them for pushing us to do better and be better. And listen, Jessica. I'm not listening again. Jessica, sorry. We've had meetings in parks, we've had email exchanges. I know they're always going to hold us to a higher standard, just like you should hold us to that higher standard. We're listening. We want to make a positive difference, but even we can't fix everything. So just realize some of those parameters. But we're listening. All of us care about these programs. We want to make sure the money keeps coming to the city. We want to sure, be sure we do it right. We want to make sure we address as many of your concerns you have. This program is not perfect for all the issues you have and all the, the hopelessness that some of you are feeling. Uh, and I know what it's like to feel like that. Um, so we're trying really, really hard to address it. So be patient with us because this is not unlimited, no strings attached money. And there is no unlimited money that can solve all the issues. But I want to assure you we're listening and we're going to continue to listen to shape the best recommendations for people. So for this next step, um, we do want to document, so that's why signing in is important. <laughs> we have additional items, parking lot, write them before you leave in, in one of the other you know, parking lot and make sure they're there. I think many were captured, but just in case, so that we can document. Department of Human Services is going to do the program. We haven't, we, we shared drafts internally, but we want you to see a draft. So our timeline, and Lars and Richard, make sure I'm right, on Friday is when we want to share a draft. That's Friday? Monday. Monday. Friday, they're going to share it with us so we can review. Monday of next week, we want to share the draft program. At that time, I think we can share the notes so that um, we can make sure we did capture everything and you can see the draft and the notes. Uh, for that accountability. So Monday, make sure you're there so we can send that information to you. We're going to ask for a fairly quick turnaround from you for feedback and comments back because we do want the program up and running very quickly. Okay, so we want to be able to go and help. But give us this rest of the week till Monday to do that drop. And then if it's out Monday of next week, we're asking the, the following Friday. Following Monday, one week's time, you give us feedback on that draft. We will have internal meetings, so we're already talking um, feedback back on the uh, April 30th. I know it's Fiesta, I know. Uh, but we're asking for feedback back so that by the end of that week, between Human Services and our department, we can have a program that you feel captures most, remember not everything will be addressed, most of what you're looking to be captured, and that we kept a list of all the other issues that couldn't be addressed in this program. Okay? So that's our commitment. Um,
George, you wanted perhaps an additional meeting. Let us see uh, what feedback we get on the draft. Maybe we can do that. Um, Fiesta and Kurt is really hard to get people together. Uh, but let us see what kind of feedback we get once we email the draft back. Maybe we'll do a, you know, here's the draft. Email us back if you want another meeting or if the draft captures that. If we need to, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we can work that out. Is that Will that work? It, it's it's feasible. Feasible. I mean, we realize yeah. we have a quick turnaround here. Yes, yes. I think it's pretty important that we all come together with a, with a draft, because right now we just sort of got a whole whole of information. We're having something to look at and really discuss yeah. the practical. No, it didn't. That's why we want to turn around and get your feedback and get you a draft. Before we should all kind of come out. together and have a point with a draft. Yes. yes. I want to go back to a comment you made about the city can't solve all the issues of problems that are in front of us. But you have the resources. If I come to you with an issue that the city cannot handle, you can refer me to someone else. Right? So in essence, you are, you know, you can handle all the problems. And I'm your worst I realize the city can only do so much. Yes. Yeah. So this is what you have to do. Yeah, in the table site migrate a little, we heard the cross referencing and other services. So there's some of that you can see. I'm hoping you didn't mind though I mentioned it. Yes. Okay, so this is what we there is a mayor's council task force at the meeting. They have a tentative meeting schedule for May 15th. Some of you have been to those meetings. They meet here. So they're addressing these kinds of issues. They have work groups that are working on these issues. At 5.30 in this space, May 15th. That's open and public. Um, but you have an opportunity there to impact some of that work, even though they're about halfway through. But I want to thank you and assure you that we're listening. I know it's a lot of time with us. Um, and I encourage you to keep talking to us um, and keep sharing your thoughts with us. Um, but thank you so very much for being here with us tonight and sharing your evening. Well, you have to get over yet from here. That's why I think it's the way it's because we don't care. When you step up here.